Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think is that that's now the recording. Okay. Um, so um, this is a, a little bit about the project background. It's a European um, Union um, initiative, which was set up in 2018. Um, for and it's all in the context of climate change, climate emergency, and, ta and tackling uh, energy use. Um, and I think you probably everybody knows that you know buildings and construction because currently consume forty percent of uh, generated energy of energy used um, in generally across Europe uh, and particularly across England. I mean the UK, and so it's very very much focused in on on that. Um, the uh, the project is, uh, is, is a joint project across uh, an intro project, so it's sort of across the, cha the channel. So it's all the southern counties of, uh, of England and all the northern provinces of, of France. Um, and the duration it comes to an end in 2023. So it's a five, it's, it's, a, it's a good, good long pro the, uh, project, five years, four million euro budget. And I think we're okay, even if we have Brexit in December, we will be carrying on till 2023. It's all been guaranteed, which is a uh, good, uh, good. Um, our partners are a mixture of, of universities and practitioners. In, um, in England, we have Norwich, uh, where we're based, and we have the University of Plymouth. And in France, in Normandy, we have the University of Caen and a, a national park called PNRPC, which CB, which is a really, really lovely um, kind of park where, they, where there's a huge tradition of uh, building in Col, in Col or in Bauge. Bauge is the, is the French term for building with earth. Um, we also uh, had a really, really lovely surprise in 2019 and the early stages of the projects where we won the best, uh, best project for, for um, low energy projects across the EU, which was which is fantastic. Um, and we won an award for it. Um, but as I said, it's in the back, it is in the background, the background of is, is a climate emergency and um, something that we I think uh, this this is this is a great series to kind of kick in that to, to be to be doing and being part of. Um, so the um, so the next um, the 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 obviously RBA has uh, declared a climate emergency, and I think we had you know everybody kind of um, went on strike. A lot of people went on strike. Our office went on strike last year, um, and we're you know all really really concerned that we we actually do that you know we reduce our operational energy and the uh, embodied energy of buildings. Um, the as, as we get the operational energy down more and more, uh, the embodied energy in buildings that increases substantially um, as a percentage of the actual uh, project build and project oper uh, building operation. So, so this is very, very much, although operational energy is, is, is crucial in the, in the Cobos project, the main focus is trying to get the embodied energy of, 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 of the construction process down using a material which, which is, which is it just comes out of the, you know comes out of the ground um and this is just uh, just showing you how how important it is in residential um uh, it's obviously in, wet, in in offices buildings it's less the operational energy is kind of a larger share of the pie but particularly in in, in, in residential so why build with um why build with earth um earth has got an amazing set of properties um, I mean, obviously, there are the, the obvious ones. It's from from the site. From a site, you can, if you're luck, lucky, you've got you've got the right consistency of uh, of clay in your earth. Um, you can build. You know, you can you can get it from the site. Uh, often, as we'll see in this project, we have a we we have different requirements from the amount of percentage of clay that's required in the earth building. Um, so we 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 will have to probably import um, uh, some clay or or actually purify it. Um, depending on on the clay content it's obviously recyclable um, and it's the energy required is just the energy needed to get it out and if necessary transport it uh, it has high thermal mass um, so it has it, it kind of irons out all those extreme temperatures as you move as, as you go across the the day and the, the seasons um, excellent fire performance i mean if you have a fire in there you're actually going to be baking it um, so that's that's great 
Um, and then uh, it has, it's shown to absorb VOCs, volatile compounds. Um, so it actually does, it, ha it aids and regenerates uh, inter internal spaces. Um, so it, it actually, it, it is shown to absorb, uh, absorb um, kind of compounds and, and if anything, if there's anything inside a building that, that's been put in there, um, which we're, we're also, everybody's trying to avoid now anyhow. Cygroscopic, which obviously kind of, it, 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 uh, it mediates the kind of um, moisture content of, uh, of, the, of the space, absorbs moisture and, release, and releases it. So it kind of gives a really fantastic kind of environment in ter terms of moisture contact. Um, it's got obviously good acoustic performance in terms of transmission. Uh, uh, Cobb has always been incredibly um, good at, at, as, as a structure. Um, it's airtight and it also absorbs harmful electromagnetic radiation. So it's no good. Um, you, don't get a, you don't get your mobile signal inside a Cobb building. Um, and it's and it's uh, very and so for those who are kind of susceptible or kind of um, are to to, to electromagnetic radiation, it is a really really great um, um, a kind of it stops stops um, radiation coming in. Um, now the one thing that uh, it isn't great at um, so far has been insulation, and that's the thing that uh, the, the Cobbage project has been addressing. How do you get an earth building to be insulated, you know, well insulated, because up to now it hasn't been. But before we go there, I just want to, you know, just say that um, uh, there is a, I seem to have got stuck. Um, can you hear me, Charlotte? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, we okay. Can hear you. I don't, uh, the slides seem to have suddenly, um, all right, okay, fine. Um, so 30%, 34% of buildings worldwide are earth construction and approximately 50% of the world's population actually live in earth buildings. So it's extraordinary really that, um, that we, you know, that we, that the earth building has just kind of fallen out of favor in the last oh, 50, 60 years. And um, we haven't been building an earth, um, you know, in, in any sort of scale wise in any way at all in, in, in Europe. Um, a lot of renovation, yes, but not, not scale wise. And especially when you see that you can actually, when in Yemen, you can build eight, up to eight stories in earth um, uh, using earth buildings. So it's a, it's a real surprise that we are, we, we are doing it. Um, again, another sort of beautiful details of bu uh, buildings, an incredibly versatile material. Um, and across the world, there are, you know, th there are earth building traditions right across the world. I mean, the, what, what's, you see big gaps in kind of Russia and North America, but it actually, um, there's still a, a traditions of various different traditions of earth building there um, in terms of, um, the, the, this doesn't really cover the whole scope of it. In, if we move, to England, um, you all know that you know, there, you know you'll be aware of earth building traditions right across right, right across England. And um, the two that we're obviously going to be constant, the two areas we're concentrating on uh, will be in the southwest and the north um, and, uh, and uh, Norfolk. Um, but you know, Ireland has its Cobb, Wales Clom. Um, there's a kind of Lincolnshire has a mud and stick um, tradition, uh, mud and stud. Um, and East Midlands has mud and unshotted cob. East Anglia has uh, clay lump uh, or dobe, which is a, which are which are clay bricks, and and you've got the cob of uh, of, of the southwest of uh, of Devon, um, bits of Cornwall, and then in in our partners in France, we've got what's called Boge, and there's um, that's that's the um, Boge or the Cobbage bit. So in East Anglia, it's it's a very it's it's a fairly recent tradition. I mean, it's sort of eighteenth century. Um, they started uh, building, uh, making earth uh, earth blocks. It's never had a, a cob tradition of of, of wet cob um, built in, in in situ. This is these are bricks which are kind of uh, which are cast and laid laid out to dry. Um, these are all earth. I mean, a natural drying. No 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 artificial heating. So this is natural earth dried earth um, and then these are rendered buildings generally and there are a huge number in Norfolk and Suffolk 
uh, and a lot of them would you wouldn't know they were earth buildings. I mean, there are villages, there are whole villages. I mean, this is on well, towns. This has got a huge number of uh, of, of earth buildings. Um, and North, Norfolk and Suffolk, you know, everywhere. And sometimes they're hidden by brick veneers because people got embarrassed that they were using, uh, had, had earth buildings and wanted to think people had, they had a, had a, had a brick building. Um, in the West Country, it's a different tradition of earth building. It's actually in situ layers, lifts of, of cob, which is an earth, you know, which is an earth and clay mix with, um, with, with, with either probably straw mixed in with it as a binder um, and then it's covered in lime render and uh, the various different roofs, thatch roofs obviously the obvious one. And then in France the Bauge is covers a, a whole, whole range of buildings. I mean in England it's generally kind of smaller houses that you see out of uh, out of Cobb or out of Adobe. Um, in France you have the whole range to, to extraordinary manor houses um, and they are absolutely wonderful. Um, and these go back to the you know, 15th, 16th, 17th century. Um, so the gob coming back to that kind of issue of how do you insulate a, um, a, a cob building? This is the, the, the project has sort of developed this, this system whereby there are two, two, two different mixes of earth. The one on the right here is the structural, and that's the sort of what is the standard kind of structural cob, which is a mixture of um, clay, earth, and, um, and, and, and actually of hemp, which is the, which, which, which is the binder. Um, it's probably roughly about 30% clay content. So, and sometimes you can find the perfect earth, which can just, you know, take it out of the ground and use that and mix it in with, with straw or, or hemp. Um, or otherwise, if it's too, too rich a clay content, you have to add aggregate and a bit of sand to reduce the clay because the problem with clay is that it, shri it shrinks and the higher content of shrink of, of, of clay content you, you get larger larger shrinkage cracks and, the, and shrinkage is one of the big issues and one of the things you have to be very, very careful of in, in, in earth building. And then, and then the kind of the redder pinkier uh, color on the left hand side is the other mix which is a higher clay content and a higher uh, much much a higher content of, um, of lightweight uh, of a mixture, and that is, in, in our case, that is, um, is is hemp, which is which gives it its insulation properties. Um, so the so so this is giving us. So if we have a wall, if you imagine this wall is six hundred, the whole width of this wall is six hundred thick. You've got three hundred millimeters of 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 cob, uh, structural cob on the right, and you've got 300 millimeters of, of insulated cob on the left. And that will give us a, a U value currently of lower, just lower than 0.3 watts per square meter. I mean, it's not, it's, it, and, and we are doing more and more tests uh, to just see what, uh, whether other materials will, um, will, will, will give a better higher, uh, better higher insulative value. Um, we've looked at straw, reed, paper, and hemp and flax. Um, and um, uh, here, uh, hemp is much more, it's, it's not hugely available, but hemp is, is quite widely available, in, uh, increasingly available in England now. Reed is the preferred uh, material in the north of France, um, and, but both of those give a, fun, a pretty good performance, um, having tested them in the labs. Um, and these, these are tests that we've done quite, quite a lot of testing to see to see what 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 what's the best performance, what's the best mix to get, um, and this is the University of Plymouth, um, all their testing machinery and stuff like that. Um, the interesting thing about the performance of hemp um, and of earth and hemp together is that it actually, in our tests, we found it actually performs much better in terms of insulation than the U value suggests. And this is suggest. This is we think, um, and a lot of a lot of increasing research is being done on this. Is that there's a phase change happens in in the kind of cob um, hemp clay mix, uh, where the cob uh, the, absorbs moisture, and, and then when it releases it, it also releases um, some late latent heat. And we and so we're getting some surprising results um, that suggest that the, the, this and, and hemp has shown this generally. I mean, in, 
there are kind of hemp, hemp construction projects just using hemp and lime, which also which show, also show this phase change or this 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 ability to, um, to 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 perform much much better than it's suggested by the pure view values. Um, and people, there's a, a lot of research being done by Jan, uh, uh, Lubo, which is the uh, guy Janovic. Um, who's who's uh, looking at that? Um, what's, what he calls a performance gap, and um, performance gap obviously also relates to the difference between what is expected and what what your final result is in in the designed between the designer designed um, uh, performance and the final performance. But it is, but it COP does seem to be behaving really really well. Um, we are also test. We've also been testing um, these are these little samples. You can see that again. You can see the two 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 materials of, of the lightweight and the heavyweight and we are also testing them structurally and this is the testing rig in Plymouth uh, University. So how do we build a, um, a cob wall, uh, this, this cobbage wall? Here you can see a, it is actually, it's a sort of um, hybrid kind of construction technique where we're using uh, a shuttering um, to contain the two layers and it's a sort of open mesh shuttering you can just see that galvanized open mesh um, and that allows the cob to breathe um, and to dry out as quickly you know as relatively quickly and the lifts this is lift that we, we we're um, building it in lifts of about 700 millimeters each um, and they and we build it in, in in each lift is built in layers so you put a little bit of the of the structural cob mix in on the right and then you add a bit of the lightweight mix and so on and forth and then you see and we've created this and it's done in the zigzag pattern as you can see there so that there's a good mesh between the two layers and we've we've done lots of experiments making sure that this um this doesn't you know uh, the, 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 they don't separate and they actually bind amazingly well together um uh and and they structurally they they perform coherently although um the the obviously the weight has been taken by the um by the load bearing um by the element on the right hand side um and there is a there is a tradition there's a good tradition of of, of building of, of cob building with with shuttering i mean it's not how it's generally done in the southwest um and but it's done a little bit in france um so it's a sort of um and, it, and it's obviously you probably know about rammed earth where you do you know which is a very it's another earth building technique but very very different from this where you're actually ramming um uh, earth into a kind of into a formwork and and compressing it here we do not we don't want to compress it too much we want to you, you just tamp it down and particularly you do not want to be um, compressing the, the insulation layer because we've you know that insulation layer is is considerably less dense than the um, than, than the, the, the the structural layer. Uh, this is a CGI of uh, of our pro a little prototype building which we're building in France um, just to show that you know, how and that this is to kind of investigate how and how 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 we build and looking at different building techniques and how quickly it will can be built and also how uh, you know it kind of tells us about how the building performs and how it's shrinking um a plan of the building with its um with you can see the kind of horizontal lines is the lightweight and the crisscross is the heavyweight and we're experimenting with different here with you, know, you can see you were experimenting with different thicknesses of wall um i think generally it's 300 thick and then we've got a 400 thick internal lining on one side and 200 on or 250 on the other side so just looking um at the um, different uh, looking at different performance in, of these walls and we're measuring two aspects of the performance one is how quickly it dries out and and also how much it shrinks um, and also in the later days when the whole building is there, we'll be measuring um, the thermal performance of it, putting heaters inside, seeing how quickly it heats up, how much it how it retains, and, and doing experiments with sort of water, uh, just, just measuring the, the moisture content and things like that. Um, this is a section we've built, we're building a little mezzanine level in just to see, you know, just to test different ways of, of, of supporting mezzanines and uh, also supporting the roof. Um, here it is in, in, in construction. 
In France, um, they have a building regulation which says no cob wall can be closer than 500 millimeters to the ground. In the UK, we can get much closer. We can get to about 150. Um, in this plinth is actually a concrete plinth. We want to get rid of that concrete plinth that we can because obviously it's hugely, huge embodied energy in that concrete, but it's an insulated concrete plinth. And I think, no, you can't see on the previous, I thought there was a little de um, detail of how it shows it. It's insulated, but it, there, is, there's a, there is a thermal break in the, in the concrete plinth. And so you can see the shuttering there ready to take the next lift. You can see the, the, the on the right hand side, you can see the first lift that's being done there. Um, the, it's all mixed um, in slightly, you know, sort of, uh, um, it's slightly kind of uh, ad hoc. Um, we, we, we're looking at much bigger mixes, but it's, it's you just put the earth um, and, you know, if, if you, in France, the structural cob, mix, cob is just coming straight out of the ground and it's then it's mixed with, with, with the reed. And, I, and as I said, in England, we're going to be using hemp and it's mixed up in this kind of big concrete mixer thing. Um, and here um, we have, um, in the next slide, every time somebody enters the, um, the viewing, it's my thing slows down, I don't know why. Um, oh, do I, have to, do I have to let people in, do you think? Oh, yes, if, it, if you could, yeah. Um, no, sorry. Oh, oh. I didn't know, I thought it would come up for everybody, but I haven't seen Sorry. Uh, if you just click admit, you should be able to just... No, I've lost everybody. Uh, I, how do I... Um, I don't actually know how do I let people in, sorry. You can just um, admit them. There should be... Um, Next to their name, it should say admit. I think if you click the participants at the bottom, it should right. pop up on the side and I'll uh, just say admit all. Yeah, OK. So every time I click my screen, it goes on to the next um, slide. Uh, maybe I should stop sharing. No, 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 that's not, not going to work, is it? Participants, okay. Uh, waiting room, a bit all, okay. That's it, yeah. Okay, I think everybody's in there again, yeah. So, um, thank you. So, back to, sorry, where we went now. Okay, uh, well, okay, this is, I was just skipped ahead, but. Um, this this is us. Uh, this is the formwork, and this is actually kind of laying the uh, laying the cob into into the into the formwork. Um, probably not. I mean, I think we that that person is obviously standing a bit, probably too hard, probably compacting the cob too much. But been a lot of experiments on how much weight we can put on it. But that's that's um, that's where uh, that, that 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 you can see the two two lifts, uh, two parts of the cobbage wall there. Um, now seems to have stopped right okay so this is the um this is the wall with its um with the with the, with the four mic off and um, we we'll just take a more detail of that of the finished lift at that point I and mean, it has a beautiful texture um uh unfortunately the because it's quite fragile that um that insulation layer that red layer we we unless it's really really well protected we will have to probably we're, we will be um, rendering that. Now we're looking at lime renders and earth renders and we're doing, we've got uh, 10 uh, sample panels which are, uh, which are up on a wall now being tested to see how well how, how they, well they kind of um, deal with, with, with um, the onslaught of winter. Um, and we're, and, but I think it's going to, we, 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 unless you've got it very, very well covered, it, 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 it does need to have a good, um, good, good render good line render or an earth render over the top of it. Um, this is the, fi the final lift we've got to this year. Um, the other issue about cob and earth building, if you're doing it in situ, is you do have a limited um, uh, opening in the seasons. I mean, really, ideally, you, you really want to be starting in 
uh, February, March and finishing your last lifts in uh, finishing the building possibly in October and put the hat, put the roof on the hat on in, 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 in October, November. So this is, this is October this year. Um, we're on fight, we're, we're on our fifth lift um, here. Um, we've, well, our role in the whole project is to uh, provide a, or find a client or somebody who wants to build a, co a, a Cobb Boge building. Um, we've, we, we had a huge amount of interest to, a year ago um, there were a number of um, estates uh, who, or including the National Trust, who were really, really interested. But COVID has put a complete end to all our initial um, uh, projects, um, and so um, we've we have got a couple of uh, a number of pri private clients who are kind of uh, thinking of doing it. Um, but it's been it, it it has been quite difficult, I must say, in, in the current circumstances to actually get something on board. Um, we've, you know, we've always, we're currently got two or three people who are kind of we're progressing with, um, and planning hasn't been easy either in terms of um, a new and the usual usual issue of trying to get a new house on on a on a, house, on a plot without, without a house has been quite difficult. Um, but this, but again, the, the, the just summarising, kind of, it's got a lower body density. It's got a really good high quality indoor qual air quality, stable air uh, temperatures because of the uh, thermal mass. Um, good, good thermal performance and high, high levels of um, of, uh, of of air tightness. This actually project is in is a is, is a house which is is not going to be built now. But that was in, this was one of our projects which was in North Norfolk. And here you can see the plan. Um, the orange is the uh, lightweight, the insulation, and then the um, the red is the, uh, uh, the, the 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 heavyweight, so the the structural. Um, and in this case, we wanted a real, really good thermal mass. So we, we, we had a structural walk, a spine wall going down the middle of the building. So we've been looking at different other, other, other ways of how we can scale up because one of the big, one of the kind of objectives of the project is that in 10 years time, we said that we wanted 1500 houses uh, built within in England and France out of uh, out of Cobbage. so one so we've we're developing different way things uh, ways of actually kind of making sure that it could be scaled up um, and also if we can't get the right clay content on, or somebody's got a, a site which doesn't have clay um, we, we we can find ways of actually sensibly and not um, extravagantly in terms of carbon footprint uh, get it to site um, we're working with uh, a company called HG Matthews in Buckinghamshire. You might have heard of them, who do uh, who are brick makers, but also do dried earth bricks, naturally dried bricks, and they also do hemp brick, uh, blocks. And um, we are developing. We've been talking to them about a, um, um, a how how we can mainstream this. And one thought about um, mainstreaming is that um, is is to look at prefabrication. Um, because this then gets rid of the seasonality of, of the, the, the in situ cob building um, and allows us, and we think we can have sort of offsite, you know, on well, sort of flying factories where you have a shed or just a covered area where we could actually um, construct uh, some kind of formwork and create these bigger blocks, um, which can then be stacked on, on each other. Um, and sort of rather, you know, very, very large. I mean, making use of obviously either crane or a, or a front lift, or a forklift, uh, to 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 put these on top of it. So it's a sort of not. It's 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 a, it's a large, a very large block. Which I mean, we we could obviously develop. Um, we really looked at bricks, but bricks don't really work when you've got these two layers, um, they, it just doesn't make sense. So that's why we're looking at the bigger, the larger, larger blocks. Um, and we've done some experiments with these as well. Um, and then it's an earth, and the, the mortar is an earth mortar um, like, like this. Um, we looked at, the, these are different size blocks we've been looking at, and we've been sort of testing them out against looking at different kind of house types and uh, how, how and, and also looking at the engineering and how they, you tie these together and how you actually get um, them stable and, and, and also 
work with uh, wind loadings and so on and so forth. So we've got engineers looking at this. Um, and this is just the well, one idea is that we should be casting them flat so that the um, so that we get a kind of fair face finish on the underside. So the of which would be the the structural cob and that could therefore be fair faced and, and be left like that when you um, on the inside of the building. So you kind of again remove remove all the um, the, the, the finish the, the interior finishings if you if you need to you still would probably need to you would definitely need to render the outside the other nice thing is we can actually embed um, conduits into the uh, into the into the blocks um, and that's and we also in in situ we would be in, in, um, um, we're building in conduit as well we're also building all the, all the monitors in at the same time so we can build conduits for uh, water and we, and for electricity um and we are also looking at um looking at ways that um i mean we've, we've focused mostly on walls um but we're also looking at um the lintels um you know with 600 wide lint um opening you could probably do it self-spanning but something wider we're looking at using hemp reinforcement to reinforce to as a, as a sort of you know to replace something i mean we wouldn't be using steel but it would be the same equivalent equivalent um uh, proposition. Um, also looking at kind of doing um, arches um, and uh, and other 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 ways of kind of using kind of um, masonry techniques. Um, but the focus of the actual project has to be on the wall. Um, that's that's where we've got the, where where the money where the European Union has asked us to. Where that's where the kind of um, research money is for. Um, and as I said earlier, we're also looking at the blocks. So that is a kind of quick um, skate through um, our, the project and, and where we've got to. Um, very, very happy now to, you know, to take any questions or, or, or um, from, from people. These are, these are the, the websites. The first is the Coverage uh, website, which gives you more information on it. Um, I, we, we've got a lot of, Quite a few technical papers which, which we're writing, we're presenting to conferences, um, and on 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 where we are. Um, as I said, we've got as I said earlier, we've got another three years to go. Next year, we hope. I mean, I think we 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 hope to build our first Cobbage building in the UK next year, um, and then the following year we'll be monitoring it, looking at uh, uh, looking at the um, performance of it with people. Um, living inside one um, and we're also doing a plot we've got a, on our website um, we have a blog um, uh, and that's that the link to the blog so do look at it and if you want any more information or like to hear more about it or are interested in actually building a cobbage building do contact me um, at uh, Hudson Architects that would be great um, so uh, that's that's yes that's where we got to at the moment that's great. Thank you, Anthony. That was uh, that was fascinating. Um, that was really good. Um, if anybody uh, wants to ask me any questions about this, um, I'll just... Oh, we have had um, in the chat. Uh, Remy, did you want to unmute yourself and um, speak to Anthony directly or... Um... Uh -huh. There you go. Hello. Hi. Hi, Remy. Let's go for it. Um, yeah, I, I, I do have a plot at the moment, but I'm, I'm selling it because a developer's bought some land next to it. So, um, but yeah, I, I'm looking for more land to build a house for myself, and I'd be, I'd be very keen in um, having a chat about the possibilities of building something that is very much the road I want to go down for our development company as well. Uh, we want to get, be sort of the, on the forefront of this kind of building method. So yeah, very interested in having a chat about anything we can do and get involved basically. We're Norwich based as well. Okay, well, give it, no, email, email me or, you know, and that was Anthony at hudsonarchitects.co.uk or info, you know, so you can go to our website. That would be really interesting. Um, it is a we're, we've. I mean, it's interesting. We've got um, 
I mean, the Plymouth, University of Plymouth are talking to Wilmot Dixon, who are also kind of, kind of been interested in it. It's just, it's just that kind of initial, that threshold to, to, to get to the next stage, which is the crucial, crucial thing. Um, and we've got to, you know, as I said, the, actually, the, I didn't actually go through the other partners. The, the, I did miss out one really, really crucial partner in this, which is Ibukai, which is Earth Building UK and Ireland. And they are, they've, they've brought, they've brought, They've, they've brought and are bringing a huge, huge knowledge of, of earth building. Um, I don't know whether anybody knows of them, but they've, um, but they're, they're a fantastic resource, um, and they're doing training. They're, the part of the, their their uh, participation is to train up people to learn uh, to learn how to build a cobbage wall. So that's you know, so Remy, that's exactly you no. Know, if, if anybody was doing building, they would come in and help. Um, uh, help help show how 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 yeah. the technique the, the cobbage technique um and then also is there um sorry um we would like to do concrete all together really so yeah. i didn't know if there was any other uh or any what's the word or you have no any uh, things that have been passed by building regs like concrete free foundations is there any other thing that that could be built on the cob well we, we it's, it's a it's a discussion we're having a lot at the moment about how how can we remove you know deep deep foundations i mean one of the issues obviously any any clay soil site site is you're going to get heave i mean if you do have a, a clay rich soil you've got the you've got the issue of um potential heave and particularly um, if you've got trees next to or near, near, near you, so um, so so yeah. so we but we are. I mean, book the uh, book I who have got uh, said got a lot of experience in cob buildings have are building off a kind of um, a kind of aggregate kind of foundations which well so really really well drained, but we are we are slightly. Um, you know, and then and then you build, then you sort of maybe you still need some kind of plinth. I mean, they always say for a cop for an earth building, you need good boots and good uh, hat. Um, hat. Um, so there is a sort of there's a lot of um, sort of ongoing talk. I wouldn't say argument, but I'll talk about how how dangerous it would be to if you if you if you have, you know of this 150 millimeters from the ground because of splashback um, and because water, if you do get water ingress into an earth building, it is a, it is a problem. So you do have to make sure it's well maintained. I mean, that, that is a really, really important thing. But having said that, there are you know, a huge number of cob buildings which are, um, are very old, you know, 400, 500, 600 years old. So it's, it, it, it's shown, it's, it's long lasting, but you just have, do have to maintain them. Um, yeah, so I think, um, no, but I'm thinking... Yeah, I, no, I it, did look at... Um, sorry, I think it's a bit of lag. Hmm. Carry um, on, Remy. Okay, have there anybody else? I was just saying, before, um, before I sell in my plot, I was looking at... Um, Oh, I think we're losing you a bit. Um, we can't. Okay. okay. Anybody else? Um, yeah. Any questions? I think uh, I think Jereen had a question. Uh, Jereen. Do I suppose from my point of view, it's really interesting to hear about a completely a, a different, a new, a, a very old technology that exists in Norfolk and in other areas. And I suppose this sits part of a lecture series, like looking from the RIBA, looking at people and place and planets. And I think that the technology that you're talking about fits very well within all those categories. So I suppose from my point of view is, what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge to actually making it commonplace in the UK? Because you said about you're hoping for the first building to be built um, uh, next year, hopefully. And... Uh, been able to monitor it and I think maybe that's part of the question is how do you what what, what is your end goal and what do you think the big biggest challenge will be in making this more commonplace? 
I think the I, I think there's there's a, there is a prejudice. I mean, I think there is a prejudice against pe people living in earth buildings. I think there is a kind of, and that's one thing that we've got to. Um, and it seemed to be sort of that it's in the less, you know, the underdeveloped world that 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 is more appropriate. Um, and so I think it's kind of one of the big challenges to say is, is to get house builders. Um, this is why we were quite surprised that Will Mott Dixon were kind of interested in hearing more about it. But getting house builders um, to adopt a, a construction technique, which is, you know, or, or build some buildings anyhow, a construction technique, which is, which to kind of, they might think, well, actually, this isn't for, this isn't a 21st century building <laughs> technique. So I think there's a sort of, um, there is a, you know, there will be a kind of um, a reluct, I think there is a, will be a reluctance to, to adopt it. And we know, as we know, house builders are quite reluctant to adopt, you know, to, to move forward, even on straightforward, mon, you know, modern means of construction, and, and, and um, as, as we all know. Um, so I think, so there's, so there's, there's a sort of uh, a cultural, there's a cultural issue there, I think. Um, I think in terms of, um, for, our, for, us, for us, one of the other challenges is warranties. Um, and, and we've got a lot of, a support from you know building control labc are kind of you know uh, uh, you know they know uh, there are quite a lot of building control officers who know the performance of of, of cob of how it works and are very uh, convinced that it's actually a really really great way of building um but we've obviously got um to to get for for people to borrow money against a cob house is is, is more problematic and i think we're all aware of what where no, we've got all problems as architects, I think, with PI insurance and all the rest of it. So I think, you know, as, as, as we develop this, we've got to be kind of very, very clear about um, who, how, who, who we, who, who's getting support from, from LABs, you know, from building control and people like that. I mean, you know, getting an Agrimont certificate and all those kind of things is incredibly expensive and it would be another project in itself to, to, to do that. So, um, so this is really just the beginnings of of trying to get it, uh, get get it kind of on the ground, get get you know projects, you know, number of houses going, and saying, hey, 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 this is this is a this is a workable and it's, and it's actually kind of working very well, and it's a fantastic kind of environment to live in. So, um, yeah. it is a, it is a bit of a challenge, but. Uh, that's how I think it was the EU found it, it was a kind of a really, really fascinating project to, to, to be sponsoring. Well, I think it sits really well in with uh, talking about different kinds of materials and talking about, you know, what what is the limited possibility and having as many options as possible, something that is part of the earth, something that has a low embodied carbon and low embodied carbon something that is locally available um i think it's you know i think personally i think it's a really interesting uh, research project no. um and uh yeah i think there's a lot that can be done i think maybe maybe making people aware of it even more so and i think this is a good opportunity to do that um no. and uh yeah thank you for that it's really good thanks anthony how many people who are here um ha ha is there anybody here who lives in an earth house oh good question mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because you know you would just i just you know it's, it's the thing that i'm going to ask at most times we do this th um, um presentation and um it's, it's sometimes very surprising how many people will say well i think i do <laughs> i'm not sure <laughs> um, our, our I office is in a clay lump building um i work for plantasol um limited right and, uh, yeah, our office is a clay lump building. It's in the center of Attleboro. Um, it is brick um, faced, but you wouldn't know that it is a, um, a clay lump building. Um, sort of, and it, it, it's quite well detailed. On, and so it would, doesn't appear as a clay lump um, building. But on the other hand, uh, we go out and see quite a few clay lump buildings where either bad detailing or um, maintenance that has been done has been done poorly, uh, that then makes issues with the clay lump. So I think going back to your previous point of um, some of the things to overcome, I'd say another thing is possibly like confidence as well. In, as I say, you kind of, 
uh, from our point of view, we only see really the bad examples of uh, clay lump building, <laughs> um, whereas the good examples, you don't know that they are clay lump building as such. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they, yeah, I'm saying, and, pe and people I know who do live in, you know, in I'm in clay lump buildings in Norfolk are, you know, very, you know, really, really happy with them. Um, but it is, it's a, it, it's a craft. I mean, it's interesting. It's a, it's less of a craft tradition than the cob building in southwest, you know, in Devon and Dorset. Um, and there are, I mean, you've probably heard of Kevin McCabe and his kind of um, his 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 cob buildings that he's done in the last or well, ten years. I mean, they're they're quite big. He's built a building for himself, um, and they're they're, they're they're sort of there's slightly convent. You know, it's all they're curved, they're circular buildings. Um, and generally, the sort of more, more recent cob buildings in Southwest are, are circular. The way he insulated his was he put PIR insulation on the outside. And that's been a bit of a, you know, uh, not a good idea because it obviously doesn't allow it to breathe. And he had lots and lots of problems. I mean, he's made it work. It, you know, it works. Um, but it's, um, it was a bit, it's a bit strange, it has to be said. <laughs> and this is... No. No, sorry. I'm just going to ask if anybody else had any other questions. Anybody wanted to unmute themselves or um, put it in the chat? Come forward. I mean, is, is anybody from Eartha here? Any member of Eartha? Because Eartha is a uh, East Anglian um, Earth Building Association. Um, I mean, it is not that busy at the moment. Again, obviously because of COVID, but um, uh, it's uh, it's they're looking at um, the do, doing a working paper on 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 earth uh, 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 unfired unfired adobe bricks um, at the moment. So there's sort of there's there's an increasing interest an increasing interest in in um, you know, I mean it's quite widespread this interest I think in earth building. Um, we'd, we'd obviously this project is taking a particular stance on 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 trying to incorporate the um, insulated layer with it as well, um, because obviously an earth brick you do need to um, insulate it somehow. Great. Um, I don't know. I think that might be it for the questions, unless anybody else. No, I think that, that might be it. Uh, in which case, this leads me to thank you very much, Anthony, for tonight's lecture. Um, as Doreen said, it's fascinating. Um, really interesting to hear about it. Um, and um, be really interested to see this um, first building goes up in the next year. Um, yeah, well, I'll come, we'll come back. I'll come back with um, next year with an update. <laughs> what I was just going to say, actually, if we can have a follow up lecture and see how it's going. And um, yeah, that would be that would be great. OK, yeah, no, that'd, be, that, that'd be that'd be that'd be great. Yeah, it would be, be good. Really good. Yeah, lovely. OK, well, thank you very much. Thanks for kicking off our lecture series. Um, and thank you, everyone, for, for joining us tonight. The next one is next Tuesday at five o'clock. Um, details on the um, website and the event rights, um, sustainability of conservation. Um, and Paul Kings is giving that lecture next Tuesday at five. So do join us for that one. Um, and um, yeah, thank you very much. We'll probably send out a short message afterwards to everyone. And hopefully, if the recordings all worked, we'll be able to send that out as well. Okay. So, so do you? So you've got to rely. You rely on me to send you the recording, don't you? I don't know. Uh, yes, I think I will. I think once the um, meeting ends, you'll be able to, um, you'll get a little recording and you can just save it as a file. Okay, great. Okay, good. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so, thank you everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, everybody else. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Bye. Thank you.